I'd always loved feature films since a kid, really, but that, uh, it felt documentaries. I mean, I started as a stills photographer and then gradually sort of segued into documentaries, and it felt to me that documentaries is what I was going to do with my life. And, and then just gradually, some of the directors I worked with, for instance, started doing uh, drama, you know, so I just gradually made the change. And it was wonderful because I'd always kind of loved, I say, I always loved fiction films, dramas, but um, I never thought I'd get to shoot them, you know. I'd just done 1984 and I'd shot a lot of documentaries and um, I'd done some rock videos and Eric Filmer was one of the producers on Sid and Nancy, you know, so it was just, um, I guess Alex was familiar with my work and that we just met up one day. I mean, we were trying to do a lot for very little money and they were rushing around and making things up as we went along. Um, yeah, it was interesting because we started off thinking uh, we were going to shoot it in a certain way, which was quite composed and sort of structured. And that went right out of the window. I mean, eventually I just sort of put the camera on my shoulder and said, that's it, <laughs> this is the only way we can really make this work. You know, because because so much was done on the fly and, and uh, because it was that kind of project. So it was quite... It was quite exciting in that way, really, you know, kind of living on the edge in a way and making it up and hoping it was going to work from moment to moment, you know. I mean, there was a lot of research into the look and, the, the you know, the history of it, which wasn't that old, you know. Um, and Alex was very, um, you know, very careful that we chose the locations and everything that really reflected those mo that moment in time. Um, but, you know, when I said we made things up on the fly, it was like that's the way the actors worked and that, Alex wanted to work with it, so it felt very spontaneous and immediate. You know, it, it wasn't... In that sense, it wasn't something that was very sort of static and controlled. It was funny watching the film yesterday because we were, you know, re doing it every time and thinking about, you know, being on the, on the, uh, on the river there in the boat and it was like... the. Sex Pistols were at this boat party, and, uh, <laughs> and it was chaotic. And the idea was the police come and shut it down. Well, the police really came and shut us down, you know. I mean, the boats coming alongside were, were kind of real. <laughs> and it was, like, really kind of funny. Um, a lot of it we did on the fly, frankly. I mean, but it was more like that in those days. I mean, I shot a number of films where we did things without permission, you know, like blowing up a Rolls Royce in the east end of London in the middle of the night, and then <laughs> packing and running as quick as we could as the police sirens were being, you know, heard in the distance. I mean, it was sort of I know, crazy, but you did it. I, mean, I don't think you'd even entertain doing that now, not on a, not in a movie. Abby Wall, the writer, and, and Alex and myself would go to work together, and Abby was saying, you know, I really think when they're in the alley kissing, we want, we want trash falling on them. You know, it, they've got to be, there's got to be something surreal about it. And I said, well, you know, you mean trash bins? And yeah, they said, yeah, with trash bins falling. I said, well, that's going to look a bit weird if they kind of trash bins are going through Frank. I'm, <laughs> you know, so I think, I said, well, but if we shot it at high speed, or maybe Alex said, what do we shoot at high speed? Oh, yeah. Oh, we've got to get a high speed camera. So we're in this alley, and the guys are finding trash bins from down the street and taking them up onto the roof, throwing them off. We've got this camera, which turned up about an hour and a half later from one of the rental companies, but it kept jamming. So, you know, our turnover, the trash is falling down, the camera would run at 120 frames and then jam completely. And I'm thinking, this is my first time shooting in the States, I'm thinking, here I am in Hollywood and the camera doesn't even run. It was very weird. So eventually we got a take that was, you know, tens, well, whatever, it was 30 feet long or something. It was long enough for the shot and that was, that was it, really. We were actually lucky to get the shot because the camera was screwing up so much. But it was, it was just something that was, like, talked about in the car going to work and, like, yeah, oh, let's do it at high speed so it's more poetic. OK, trash bins. It was kind of funny, but it was that kind of shoot. There's a long dialogue scene going across the bay in, on the Bay Bridge in San Francisco. And I always remember that because I'm sitting at lunch having a pretty hard day's shoot 
And Alex says, uh, can we go and shoot something? I said, well, yeah, now it's lunch. He said, no, no, I just need to do a little shot in, a, in the car. Oh, uh, OK. Um, on the way to... Sh we were uh, somewhere else in San Francisco, so we get in this car with a camera, just me and a couple of magazines. Sound record is hiding in the bottom of the boot or something. Um, we drive across the Bay Bridge. <laughs> Alex writes the dialogue as we get to the start of the bridge. <laughs> Gives it. <laughs> I think we're shooting like two minutes of dialogue driving across this bridge, just like three of us in this car. <laughs> oh, it was kind of that. It was crazy, but it's in the film. It's a great little piece, you know. <laughs> it's kind of fun. I wish we did more of that now, you know, but it's like a lot of the films you do, it's like two pre-thought in a way, you know what I mean? I think it's one of the major performances ever in film. I really think it's quite stunning. And you, at the time, it was funny at the time because although I'd met him a bit before he played the character, most of what I remember of Gary, you know, he had the hair, the hair was, you know, sewn into his own hair. So he kept it. So even in the evening you go for a drink or something, he was still Sid, you know. Um, so I remember Gary as Sid, not as Gary. And it was funny, only quite towards the end, we went out for a Chinese meal in San Francisco and had a few beers one night. And then it suddenly, oh, that's somebody else behind the character. But he, I mean, he still had the hair and he was still wearing the black gear when we went out. But you could tell it was somebody else rather than Sid there. He'd kind of, it let the part go a little bit by then because we were almost finished. So it was, it was really interesting. But he was just phenomenal. Uh, him and Chloe, that relationship and the way the way they um, they built a scene. You know, it was that was what was so much fun about it was working with these, mainly these two actors and, and just creating those scenes in those small rooms and and getting that movement in it and getting that. I, I just thought it was that was there yeah, was such a nice way of working. You rarely get to really work that way so closely with um, with a cast, really. You know, the film is an interesting mix, I think, between between something that is almost documentary realism and very immediate, and and a sort of poetic realism. Really, there's moments in it that are are quite surreal and poetic and I think reflect, you know, I mean, the, me the essence of the story is these two lost people that find each other and, and, and uh, you know, obviously it's just a, a sad sort of relationship with these two, two lost souls, really, that are kind of in a world that they can't really cope with, I suppose. Um, so, you know, I say it has an element based in a reality, but there's moments that become very surreal, like when you know, um, when Sid does the My Way uh, video in Paris, you know, um, it's like it becomes a dream. And the end of the film is very much a sort of surreal dream. But I think that was Alex's real forte, his strength in filmmaking. He could mix these kind of one moment you're laughing in what is almost slapstick comedy, and the next moment it's like, you know, Sid is cutting himself with a razor and then and the next moment then there's kind of money floating through the air and it becomes this kind of surreal kind of nightmare. He's very, very clever. I think uh, I always thought uh, Alex it was been it's been a shame he's not done much more you know, in, in movies because we need people with his kind of sense of um, visual expression, you know.